meeting to order. 535. Um, are we going to alter or switch anything around on the agenda? I, 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 not letting me have anyone's here for I did a request for early. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, we'll get you out of here okay. early if you want. It's a fairly short agenda. I don't know if anybody's seen the agenda. I don't think we have anything significant. Yeah, it's really quite the adjust. All right, and we will be having an executive session at some point. In this All right, I'll accept a motion to approve the minutes of July 19th. So I vote. Second. All right, it's been moved and second to accept the minutes of Wednesday, July 19th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, uh, new business. The first item of new business is appointing the interim town manager, which uh, Cynthia's original letter of resignation had her leaving on August 4th, but for um, health reasons and whatnot, she informed us at the last meeting that the 28th of July would be her last day, which she has done. So Chip needs the power of the uh, of signature as the interim town manager. So <laughs> I will make a motion to that that agree. We appoint Willis D. Chip Stearns the second, working under contract through NIMREC as an employee of NIMREC to the position of interim town manager with all duties and responsibilities associated to be effective immediately today. Mm -hmm. Right, August 2nd. Second. Right. Second. Second to immediately appoint Chip Stearns. Oh, I, see Paul have a chance. I hope you all have had a chance to meet. Um, welcome, Chip. <laughs> to the position of the interim town manager. <laughs> I'm welcome to the space here. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. You're in charge. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, we've got uh, a question of mowing equipment, quotes and award. We had a discussion at the last meeting concerning mowing equipment for the new town employee, uh, for the road crew who will be a road crew member as well as take care of all of the town mowing with the exception of the cemeteries, which is a contract been on that and we had I, do we have those prices there was a question of the size the question was the size the and I did of the mower I spoke to Brian about it as well as a couple other people um, and basically Brian had gone in thinking the the mower that was proposed was a 60 inch um, Brian had gone in thinking that he was going to ask for a 52 inch, which seemed like sort of the right size. It's only a hundred dollar difference to go to the 60 inch, as it is currently most of the mowing that this person would be doing is done with a 60 inch. Um, so, you know, there would also be the, the need for a small push mower, which I think the um, treatment plant has one. Um, but then somebody also raised the question of, and I, I don't remember where we are on this, the question of um, being able to move it with a trailer and a pickup truck, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't, I don't remember where we got to on those questions. Um, and this person's concern was, do we really want to be buying all this equipment to be mowing five lawns when it might be more economical not to do it that way, and I didn't have a good answer, so I thought I would just bring that up. And um, I don't, I don't know, because um, I think that sort of got. I don't know whether you know where we are on that, um, but I think that may have gotten, a, you know, transport of the mower, et cetera, may have gotten a little bit lost in the shuffle over the last couple months. So. Um, Okay, right. So this what was the plan on Brian's part for? Do they have a trailer? Or the, well, the, the, the proposals included a 16-inch mower, a trailer right. to go with it. 
and then we use the highway pickup truck to move the trailer. Okay, highway pickup truck. Highway pickup truck. So that's what I was assuming, yeah. but I didn't know that we had to be that yeah. for sure. And they also yeah. have uh, in the budget, I think, ten thousand dollars to buy a pickup. Do you happen to have that quote with you that has the trailer on it, or not? I do do not. you remember how all much that was? All of the quotes were the same, with the exception of the desire to go with the second highest bid from Pinnacle View Equipment for just under ten thousand, I think. Around nine nine eight five, I think was the total. Yeah. It was not the lowest bid, but it was the Proxim agency that would be right. servicing the mower as well by right. proximity. Yeah. And and so, uh, if the department head would recommend that, that's what I would recommend. Um, the, somebody pointed out, Tom, you might be able to comment on this that the fire department owns a trailer that it doesn't use very much. Is that a trailer that could be used for that purpose? might be used for that purpose, do you know? Uh, yeah, I suppose. I just don't, I don't know whether, I don't know whether it's a perfect match to the trailer to the... Yeah, what's the dimension of the trailer? At least five feet across? Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe that's something we that's, should that's, explore. That would be a cheaper alternative you already own trailer. Than owning, a, than owning another trailer, if, yeah. if that makes sense. It might not, yeah, you know, for the cost of the trailer and if it's perfectly suited for the rig, it might not make sense. But it might be worth having the conversation. Is it an empty trailer? It is, for, for the most part. I mean, we we have it at the station. We never know when we're going to need it for anything, you know, to transport the ATV or or if we get called to transport booms and pads, booms and pads to an incident somewhere or foam to an incident somewhere. Then you need it. Right. But, but if they were in town, that wouldn't be too much of an issue. I, I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't think of it. I, not off the top of my head, I can't think of a reason why it would be a, a big so something to explore. Uh, like, uh, by the lower deck and service, but not a trailer. You know. Okay, so well, I, I would leave. I would leave that up to. What's everyone's pleasure here? Do we uh, want to see the figures in front of us before we take this action? And your your last minutes, I think we've. You're right. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at that right now, and there's nothing in here. That's no, I mean, I guess I would. I guess I would recommend that we purchase the mower and leave it up to Chip's discre discretion to discuss with Brian Brian and Tom whether that's a viable option. Or yes, that's right. As a town, uh, taking bids for, uh, from a private uh, mower to, to do a cost analysis to see if it's... I think... Um, well, specifically these spots have been done either by Eric, Eric I mean, McGowan has been has been done privately, um, and just cost wise, allowing Brian the, the flexibility with of another employee for plowing, sanding, and other road work, as well as it was a matter of making that position sufficient to sufficient to travel. Is a new employee involved as well? Yeah, or no. 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 There's, there, there is, um, we had given up several years ago, as you might recall, um, a part, a, a part-time employee in the highway department, and Bill Harlow was filling that role for a period of time as the part-time employee. He is no longer with us, as you probably know. Um, and so there, we had been going back and forth on whether we would refill that position with a part-time employee or not. And the request was made that a full-time employee probably made more sense for the department for a variety of reasons. And then the, the possibility of that, one of the duties of that person was to do additional maintenance, which included lawn mowing. So it wasn't hiring a person to do lawn mowing per se. It was hiring a person for the highway department who would spend some portion of their hours doing mowing. So chairs are over here. Chairs are over here. Or here's one. Or there's one right up front. <laughs> So, are we going to authorize the purchase of this mower and 
Well, not or do we want to wait until those that discussion has been had with Brian and Tom concerning the trailer usage? And I don't know what the cost involved. And we don't have the exact and, figure. And, and whether the the answer to your question, Greg, is that yes, there has been cost analysis done. I can't tell you whether that analysis revealed that this would be a cost savings or not. I think it was a feeling that it um, that it addressed a few different issues that that had been issues. So um, and and at a, at an expense that seemed appropriate, um, but I, but specific as far as cost analysis of mowing just for that portion of it, I don't have the answer for you. So I don't know whether we want to put that off or not, put it off or. Tell it to you. Yeah. I well, it sounds like we probably should table it until at least we have the figures right in front of us to work with. Okay. Um, I see on this that. McGowan's last mowing of any of the uh, properties other than the cemeteries was to be uh, one more week from, so that will be a week that is going without mowing and this week as well, so I mean, things will get start getting a little shaggy fairly quickly. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, so, would, I would assume that Eric can do that for us if we ask him to. So, um, but I just make that I assumption know. and do with that and table this until the next meeting and, and we're getting have the figures in front of us. Watch up the mowing season. <laughs> <laughs> when we can yeah. work out using the fire department trailer, if that'll work, and or if we should add that cost into that. Which I think it would Which it was on, 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 on that quote. Which I don't remember exactly. exactly. Right. 1395 for trailer. 1395 was the trailer. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else want to weigh in on this? Any questions, objections? Go ahead and hire him for the Lord's sakes. We've been needing somebody, I think. Uh, well, we've already hired. We've already hired yeah, in person. Yeah, no, well, then, then let him fill in. Eric's up to here with work. Yeah. And he's the one that's been giving us the deal. All right. All right. Uh, so we will yeah. pull that to the next one and yeah. bring it to the next one. We will act on it at that time. All right. So the next one, the uh, new business is recycling. We have some folks from Putney Meadows residents yeah. to speak to this, and I um, assume I some of the rest of you are here to speak to that as well. My name is Edith Gould, and we have written a letter to you. And I've gotten 29 signatures from people at Putney Meadows in the town of Putney asking that you really consider putting the recycling bins down at the town yards or anywhere, but you had been talking about putting them down there. And I drove down there to ask if they were going to be there, and two of the employees down there told me, no, they're not going to be here. So now uh, we have recycling at Putney Meadows. So I'm really thankful for that. But the town of Putney doesn't have it still, and I'm really hoping that you will consider getting those recycling bins in as soon as possible. I could read you my letter, but I'll just drop it off with you if that's all right. Okay, well, we have time, in. We have time. if you wish to read it out and go on the record. That's it just says exactly what I said. Please consider putting those recycling bins in by the end of August, which I had listened to a select board meeting and you said that possibly you would be having them in by then. And I really hope that you do because we really need them. I mean, we have very tiny bins at Putney Meadows and they will be emptying them twice a week. But even with us, 28 apartments, we fill those bins, bins in no time flat, and uh, that, as I, as you and I talked about previously in in our BCA group, I think it was. But um, that's the responsibility of your hauler to provide adequate recycling for you. Well, so it's probably it's probably adequate. I don't know. But if it's, it's but if it's overflowing not three yet. days a week, I just I, I just would remind you that it is the legal responsibility of your. Hauler 
to manage that appropriately for you. So if it's not a sufficient, so if it's not a sufficient receptacle for it, that's their responsibility. Yes. To, I'm sure to you will. Yeah. I mean, it's so new to us because you helped us really immensely get it by calling people in Maine who manage our building yeah. and telling them that they should be doing something for us. Yeah. And um, I'm very thankful for that, but I still think the town of Putney needs more than that. Now, can I just hand you my letter? Well, as we've said, we are revisiting this in August, and here we are in August. Um, the proposed location for the bins down just before you get go through the gate to the town garage, we looked over discussed it with Brian. Could you speak a little louder? Sure. Yes. Oh, yep. Please. Sorry. <laughs> Where are the bins proposed? To, they go, are, they have been proposed to go down on the road to the town garage off of River Road. But, but to clarify, there, the proposal is currently being discussed as to whether it's something the town really wants to do or not, primarily because of the expense involved. Right. Sure. What are the alternatives if the town doesn't do that? Uh, the alternative, well, is potentially to leave them where they have been. Uh, the concern then becomes, you know, who's using it mm -hmm. and access to, you know, to them, which is going to be an issue at uh, the town garage as well and has raised a number of concerns on Brian's part, you know, about people pulling in and out of there at all hours. Uh, you know, the, the, the prospect of illegal dumping, you know, without anybody supervising it. Yeah. And when we approached this, knowing that this was coming six months into the fiscal year, we budgeted a certain amount of money for last year at town meeting to look into the costs of private hauling of recycling, which is that forty thousand dollars that we plugged into that that number for that is essentially what it would probably cost us to continue to have those. You know, that's it. But again, that's an you know a guesstimate mm. on these haulers' parts because we don't have a, a concept of how much more usage or less usage and or whether you know people are going to be coming from all around and dumping in Putney's dumpsters because. They're wide open and sitting there. Um, I went through this last Saturday. If you're going to take recycling to the dump in Bravara, which is wide open and is, I believe it costs a dollar now to go through, you do need to purchase a sticker at the dump from the WSMD. For, for $35, mm -hmm. which is a one-time one one cost. One-time yeah. annual fee. Yeah. And it's, but, don't go on Saturday morning. <laughs> it was a long haul because they're sending everyone over the scale and through the process, even if you're just recycling. So that's something that the waste management district has got to work out. And I think, you know, it'll take them time and they'll work the kinks out of that. First. But but that but that is the alternative currently yeah. is that you're taking your recycling to Brattleboro and or um, my understanding is that we are able to recycle in at the Westminster slash Bellows Falls station as well. Right, um, okay, which I, I personally, I don't have any experience of, I'm not sure what that entails, whether you have to get a it's sticker. It's only open at certain times. That's correct. That is correct. Right, there is, will, there is not, right, we've lived under the advantage of having 24 seven dumping you know, for our recyclables. Well, I don't see it as a disadvantage that people are recycling at all hours of the day. I live where no, I can it, hear the it tinkle. Is, it is not. <laughs> the question becomes, because prior to this, every town had dumpsters for doing their recycling. Other towns now will be looking into different options. Some will probably be looking at the same options that we are putting dumpsters out with a private hauler doing that but they're also going to have those same concerns. Without supervision, you're 
we're leaving ourselves wide open to you know potentially doubling the amount of recycling that's hauling, and that comes down to dollars and cents the cost of hauling. It seems to me the prospect or the possibility of supervision is terrific right next to the fire station compared It's not bad, but it's not the fire department's responsibility. No, I know, but also it's very traveled. That's part of the problem. We get people from Westminster dumping there, we get people from Dummerston going there, we go there, people off the interstate. So we end up with much more recyclables in this particular dumpster we have historically uh, than any other. Typically uh, more, more than double the other, other towns be, of our size. We'd be paying for all the other towns. I got you. Plenty of taxpayers. Yeah. But you're saying that you're going to lock them at night. You're no. only going to have them open three days a week. No, you're not. I listened no. to a select board meeting in which you discussed that. We discussed that as a possibility. We're not saying we're doing anything. We're saying we're discussing all the possibilities. We, we have not agreed on any and, and just process one for other this. Thing, because at one select board meeting I listened to, you said that you thought that the ground outside that gate was contaminated. And one of the, no it isn't, because one of the women that lives at our house had a house there right by that gate, and she said the dump was nowhere near that. I think, again, that was a question brought up in conversation, right. saying, is this something we're going to have to address? Yes, I think Brian right. brought it up. So. Right. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it, it, that is right where the old town dump in Putney was, so it's, you know, it's a valid concern to yes. be assured that we weren't going to enter into some kind of regulatory violation or something like that in dealing with that. Yes, Anne. Um, I, I bring a letter with 23 signatures. First of all, the first that had the letter made two points. The first was, um, could we have more information? And we do. We appreciate the uh, card that was sent out last week. Thank you for doing that. That was one of the ways too. And 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 we apologize for them not having done that significantly earlier, which they which we we were under the impression they were going to do. Yeah. As well as give a signage down here when the dumpsters went away, mm -hmm. which they didn't do either. So we we had sort of left it on them to follow up on what they said they were going to do. When that didn't happen, we didn't really pick up the slack on that. So that was okay. that's a problem. So, yeah. but the second point in this letter is just to to urge you. Um, we had to. to in some way solve this problem and we realize you know it's it's got all kinds of aspects and angles to it but I just I, we had been told that somehow that the impression had been received by the by the select board that people were really not that concerned about this mm -hmm. and I just would like to say that that was not our experience when we took a letter around Every person we spoke to said, oh, please, please, hand me the pen. I really want to do something. Or let me go get my mother. She's really upset about this. Um, somehow or other, there seemed to have been a time lag between when it happened and people kind of registering what it was going to mean in their lives. I am going to say in our own defense, I've been hammering on this since the first of the year, saying, you know, in, yeah. in six months, they're going away, and we need to be, you know, have something in position, or and or at least a decent excuse. So and the reality the reality is this discussion has been going on in this room for probably two years. Right. Exactly. Um, you know, it's been it's been regularly brought up and addressed. We have a representative who sits Dan Toomey sits on the Wyndham Solid Waste Management District Board and. He's been reporting, and we've been talking about what was going to happen with the recycle. And I'm not, I, we're, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just, I'm just saying it's something we've been talking about for a long time, and we don't, we don't take it lightly. We just, when it comes down to the reality that it's basically going to be a minimum of forty thousand dollars annually to provide those dumpsters for the town. That, for me personally, is a tough nut to swallow. Um, you know, we consistently hear people's concerns about things re like recycling, but I would say I have to say more consistently I hear people's concerns about our taxes 
and when it's forty thousand dollars a year, that's a chunk of money, um, and somebody's going to be paying that bill, and that's a conservative estimate, seemingly at this point. Right. I mean, that's um, I just so. I'd like to, to say that there, there's sort of two issues here in a way. One is people's convenience or inconvenience, but the other is. Mm. Putney as a town saying, this is really an important value to us. We really want to address it. And that that's a, a more generalized point of view. Um, and I guess my, my question would be, at this point, what's your thinking about the point at which there's going to be a decision made and something done? Well. <laughs> Mr. Chair, <Jay. laughs> this is a classic case of, you know, we have been, in effect, kicking this can down the road. Uh, we, you know, because the problem is not, the problem is not going away. Uh, as far as an interim solution of placing dumpsters and having a private hauler, whether they're placed on the town garage road, which at least allowed a certain amount of privacy, perhaps not so much public, you know, access to non-putty residents and whatnot. And there's, and we also, the fact that we funded nothing or anything for any kind of supervision or even the preparation of the site. Now, in discussion with Brian, it looks like, you know, we could pull that off without too much effort having them prepare a site to do it. But, you know, there's, it's, those are costs that were not even thought of in that process. You know, we really were. Well, we didn't we, have. We, a we did. Clear we did. Sense. I mean, they, our, our original our original thought was that it was going to cost that if we put somewhere in the ballpark of ten to twelve thousand dollars aside for setting up some infrastructure there or a fence over here or various different ways of doing it, um, and then that we we were based on the numbers we were initially presented with we were under the impression that the hauling part of it was going to cost somewhere in the range of eighteen to 22000 a year. Right. And we thought eighteen to $22,000, so that's probably manageable. Uh, now, as it is, we put it out to five different haulers, we only got one bid, and that bid was for $40,000 a year, and that's a conservative estimate. That's right. Um, so, you know, I think we could, if, if it were accessible, for example, if we were to put it back at the fire station and we were to haul the same amount of material that we've been hauling or that Wyndham Solid Waste has been hauling for us, that 40,000 a year is gonna be closer to 70,000 a year. So when you start doing the math on that and you start saying, okay, what's the trade-off of putting it over here? What would be the cost if we were to fence it and have somebody monitor it? What would be, you know, it's just, it's a lot of money to, for, for something which, uh, I love the reset point there. I used it all hours of the day. I, you know, it was great. Sure, it's it was an incredible you convenience. You go there on Sunday afternoon and but, you But it's exactly. a lot of money to ask people to pay for a convenience. So. Yes, ma'am. And I, I'll interject. It's something that's been talked about. It's been in the papers. It's been on the agenda. And sometimes we don't pay attention to what goes on in town. I was at a gathering and nobody, a neighborhood pilot, nobody could name the select board. So, you know, that is the infrastructure crumbles when we don't pay attention. And it is, you know, it's serious business, but Putney Select Board didn't cause this to fall apart. It right. fell apart way right. out here at Wyndham yeah. Solid Waste Management District, and you all have been trying to keep the balls in the air. And I thank you for that. I thank you very much. May I, may I just give you our... I was just thinking, why were we not... I mean, a friend of mine has gone to Brattleboro and paid the $35. And to be honest with you, I was thinking of taking up a collection in, at Putney Meadows and getting $35 to go to Brattleboro. Wasn't it possible for something to happen here in Putney where you asked us to give so much money and you would get us the bins? I mean, I think it, we would rather have given the 20 or $35 to Putney and said, we'll help Putney do get the bins rather than having to run down to Brattleboro when half the people in my building don't have cars anyway. It's still the, the, the annual cost. I mean, we, you know, we could do that and, and it, we might find that if we 
took the 1,100 households that are in Putney and charged them each $35 a year that, you know, there's 35,000 bucks. Maybe that's a model we should be looking at, but it wasn't a model that we did consider previously because it, we didn't think it was going to be necessary. And then the way the cards fell, this is what has come of it. So I'm new to the conversation, but I'm curious if you might have also looked at potentially doing this internally uh, by using existing staff uh, and having them do the hauling. Some towns do that. It's not, it's not an economically viable solution for us. Did you actually crunch the numbers? Well, um, you know, I can't say we actually crunched the numbers, but we definitely had the conversation. Um, and, and uh, I, you know, the equipment required, et cetera, I think would make it unrealistic. But, I, but we could crunch the numbers on it. Um, Did I get a date in answer to my question? Restate your question to me. Mm -hmm. When you're Restate going to my question. Right. My question is, when are we what? A yeah, date? what? Time what time? is a date that you feel comfortable saying that you feel that the decision will be made one way or the other, so people have clarity? Well, I honestly can't give you that date. We're we're in. We're here. We are in discussion of this, yeah. and it, and it's ongoing. Um, Brian right. has mentioned the fact that. Due to the heavy rains earlier this month and in June, you know, there's been a lot of road repair going on. The dirt roads needed a lot of attention, and that has preparing a site for the dumpsters got moved way down on the priority list there alone. Which, when we said, you know, looking at August, I said, well, that's, you know, yeah. 35 days down the road. That's not going to happen. But here we are at the beginning of August saying this. I honestly, and I'm, I would say that this probably is going to take more discussion, more input. You know, I think there are probably as many people that feel strongly about the need for this as there are folks that have either private hauler or are just going to make the step and say, okay, it's off to the dump with my recyclables. Is there any way we can help this process along? Yes. I mean, is there anything we can do? What, what would help you all with this? I, I'm afraid this is one of those, it, it's, this is a fiscal question. I mean, it comes down to it's dollars and cents. And whether we, as a town, want to go into the dump business, which is, you know, that opens a whole other ball of wax. That, then, then we're looking at expenses. I mean, this is much like, not like, but a similar situation when we looked at policing situation saying okay do we follow a course of going into this business ourselves you know and, and and maintaining that our transfer station or something like that would be well we're getting into a considerably more money than this uh, than private hauling mm -hmm. you know yes, I've been uh, uh, up across from Greenwood School that whole area up around there they pay for a dumpster and now they're paying for the recycling pickup. They do it as a group, as sort a neighborhood. A regional, a regional People do that kind of thing. Yeah. People are already doing, you get the $35, you take my uh, recycling. So, I mean, in Westminster, you pay the taxes. When I live there, you pay the taxes. They have garbage pickup. I was astounded. It's part of the tax bill. And now they have recycling pickup. But, but it's a huge amount of money. Oh, it, I mean, it's a major, major amount of tax expense. money. Yeah. Yeah. And we can examine that if that is, you know, the will of the public. We can examine those yeah. costs and presented it, you know, when we put the budget together at town meeting. Yes. Do you, do you have any idea what the cost is in Westminster? I know, I don't. Seems that would be a good thing to I do. want to say it's pushing 300000 a year for, yeah. the, for the town contract. Yeah. But, I, but, I, but that's just my recollection. Well, I don't know how accurate that. People want the convenience that we had, we're going to have to pay for, pay for it. There's no, there's no magic plan or... No, there is no That's true. Plan. No. No, and this, uh, you know, as Scott pointed out, and again, this is not to try and absolve us of responsibility for this, but this is a, this is a Wyndham Solid Waste issue that they, you know, we sort of arrived at this point by a series of things at Wyndham Solid Waste that that's where we ended up. You know, we didn't know, we knew it was a possibility that those dumpsters were going to go away. We've known that for a couple of years. years yeah. It was in, I don't know, April when they had their meeting where they decided yes it was going to happen and then they told us 
two months from now, they're not going to be there anymore. Yeah, um, so, you know, we had, in, in, a, in an odd way, we had a lot of time to prepare and very little time to prepare. As far as the question of, you know, we were initially thinking we were going to be, and Scott mentioned this, but that we were going to be trying to set up an arrangement down by the highway department for the end of June so that when those went away, we would have a transition to over there because of the issues that occurred on the roads, the highway department was unable to do that for us. In, in partial answer to your question, and if we did want to do something down there, Brian has told us it would probably be early to mid-September before they realistically would have the time to do something down there. So that, that puts a time frame on this. The other thing that came to light from Wyndham Solid Waste through this process was that um, the dumpsters that were there have been made available to the towns, but for reasons that I don't fully understand, there was a six week period during which they were not gonna be available. So when we had the idea that maybe we were gonna try and make this happen as of June 30th, July 1st, it became irrelevant when the dumpsters that we were gonna use became unavailable and then we would have had to have purchased dumpsters or rented them, which is an additional expense. Mm -hmm. um, Oh. It doesn't sound like a lot of money, but if the people who are paying private haulers to do it now didn't have to pay that, it, it might be interesting. It would be interesting to work those figures and see. Exactly Unfortunately, how that's a that's a difficult figure to, to you know. Yeah, that would be a you know matter of polling people, I suppose, and you know, I mean, at what point do we sit down and could be part of the solution now. Well, I think an additional problem with that, though, is that with Act 148, which is coming down the pipe even for you know, residents, uh, the, the haulers are required to take compostables, recyclables, and trash. So if a bunch of these people who have private haulers are currently getting their trash taken away because they want someone to take care of their trash, they also know that they're going to have their recyclables and their compostables taken away, too. So they're not going to want to pay an extra tax through town to cover everyone else that doesn't have a private well, haul. If we had a town where I have pick up for everything, three hundred thousand so. dollars, a lot of people would not have to pay anything themselves except through the taxes. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of but a lot of people who figure out innovative ways to do it as inexpensively as possible would be burdened with the tax load of that. So, which is, you know, that We need to know how many people are doing it privately and how many people are having it done. Yeah, which again is very hard I to tease out. I'm you know, sure I'm not even sure how you would do that, but. So, so what do you say? Oh. Sorry, it, it, I'll be very quick. Private hauling is going to individual private homes? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, and the, people you got the $40,000 bid from come to dumpsters. Yes. yes. <coughs> in some well, they do private hauling as well. But, but, but the bid we got was for dumpster two. So, so we'll, we'll call, call that what dumpster the, hauling. What Just the bid was on, so the, the, one of the tricky parts about it is that since we don't know, if we were to relocate them, we don't know exactly what the volume would be. They figured out for us, based on other towns of approximately our size, yes. a, 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 again, a conservative estimate for what they thought it was going to be and what you're paying for, you know, they have to be able to schedule, you know, they have to be able to say, okay, we're going to go to Putney twice a week and pick up those dumpsters, and that's what they're going to be. So you're paying for a schedule in which you're paying for trucking twice a week for dumpsters, yeah. regardless if the dumpster is 10% full or 110% full, you're gonna pay that fee. Then what you pay on top of that is tonnage. So when they take that dumpster somewhere, they have to pay per ton to get rid of it. So if it's 110% full, that's a whole lot more tonnage than if it's 10% full. So it's a, it's a very fluid number until, until you've actually done it for a significant period of time in order to actually figure out what the real costs involved are. Yeah. Um, but for example, last Wednesday, I think it was, Cynthia said she was in her office and, and the guys in the Sevka truck came by and said, how come the recycling dumpsters aren't in here? Well, it turns out Sevka has been, every time they do a big window installation or something, all their cardboard comes to our dumpsters. 
that's great. We love to, you know, as far as the Putney philosophy is concerned, great. Right. Bring us, bring right. us your recycle. Yeah, you know, up, until, up until that, but up when until it comes there. to having to pay for it, right. it's and a up different until story. Their removal, you know? it was part of the Sevco. In as an example, could have been taking that recycling also to the dumpsters in Dumberston or closer to a job anywhere, or anywhere they had to be. Right. Yes, I'm sure because yeah. it was part of a regional situation, which is probably ultimately the long-term solution yes. needs is, to is have pressure situation. on the Wyndham Solid District to the Solid Waste District to move in the back, back in the direction of the, of the dumpsters. Yes. Recycling. I mean, it's, 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 it's a big problem for each town and, you know, each town trying to reinvent the wheel, you know, it's on this big problem too. is a big problem and very costly. Yeah. And, and ultimately wasteful when it could be done on a regional basis that would be more, far more effective. And, and I think that Scott's point of don't go down there on a Saturday, I, this has been a wake up call for them too. I mean, I know oh, the folks yeah. down there are going, wow, we knew this was going to be right. a headache, but I don't think they figured that I don't think they quite what, quite what was going that was so. going to look like. Are there two spots on Wyndham Solid Waste? Yes. And we've only had one person serve for a long time. That's true. Dan's been very dedicated and very, he's been great. He is. But, but yes, there is a second slot on that and anybody who was interested in it would certainly So one of you could leave this meeting tonight as being a, a, a potential appointee. <laughs> oh no, be an appointee. Not a five an appointee, yeah. <laughs> Sir. I, I think the point made earlier uh, about Act 148 is very important. Yes. Because all of this is presumably, hopefully, will wrap up into a state vision on how to handle solid waste. And the intent of tasking the haulers with uh, having to take care of the recyclables is very sensible. And in a sense, by pulling the dumpsters, Putney is encouraging that to happen more quickly. I don't know if that was the intent or not, but that's certainly the outcome. Well, well remember, no, they, it right. fell Putty, into Putty, our lap. Putney did not pull the dumpsters. <laughs> the solid waste district pulled the dumpsters. Putney, For us. Putney and I'm sure the surrounding towns have had difficulty figuring out exactly how they are going to respond to that. Right. I, I believe in Dummerston, you know, I recall seeing a quote from somebody on the sled board in Dummerston saying, well, it's only a few more miles down the road to, Br to Brattleboro. And that's where I'm taking my recycling to the bins. Now, I'm sure they'll, as time goes by, work out that system a little bit. It is a little inconvenient because it isn't 24 7 like we've had here. We've had the advantage of that, or a Sunday afternoon, even. You know, for, but again, that's something for them to resolve. Um, we could certainly examine, uh, you know, hauling here, but it's going to affect your taxes. No, and I think your I think your your point is that your point is well taken that you know we had we had those dumpsters sitting there on July first so we transitioned right over and we had this discussion with the the hauler who gave us a bid because we knew that he pointed out and I think he's right and I think they found this I was just down at Triple T the other day and I was chatting with him about it but that the whole it has changed because people are saying, oh, what are we going to do about it? So you're right, it, it, you know, it does force the issue some. It was a variety of circumstances for us that didn't allow us to transition that smoothly. But over the long haul, this is a much larger statewide problem. The, the problem for us as a town is that we're dependent on Wyndham Solid Waste Management District to, to, to deal with that for us unless we decide to become a town that has a transfer station and then, as Scott said, or do we really want to be in the dump business, so on and so forth. We could become our own district or we could become a transfer station within the district or, you know, there's 25 different models of how this could all look. None of them cheap. One, None of them cheap. Okay, one again. outside. I talked to John. John who volunteers his time. John Smith volunteers his time to go do the, and do the bo bottles, bottles and cans out here with a five cent return. The money goes to the rec league, mm -hmm. mainly increase. for, yay, they, for the swimming pool. And, and all of a sudden, more people have been <laughs> dropping off because people just generally threw that five cent right. in because they didn't give a darn. Yeah. So it's, it's 
that's the upside. John and I had a conversation about it, and thank John Smith over and over again for willing to do that, and at some point somebody else is going to have to step forward and do that recycling. But he said, it's up, that's great for the swimming pool, for the rec league, and so on. Before we end up thank yous, I would just like to say thank you to all of you mm -hmm. for being willing. Even if you folks don't know our names. <laughs> <laughs> John, Scott, Steve, <laughs> I know your names, um, for being willing to talk with us and, and kind of work on it together. Like I said, there, I was there Saturday morning with my recyclables in line at the dumpster. We're, we're all in the, we are all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I guess I would say, and to, in, in, in answer to your question of, you know, as I just said, there's 25 different scenarios. Um, it, as to what you and or anybody else can do to help, um, I guess my feeling would be if there's anything that somebody, and the gentleman in the middle whose name I don't know, um, you, you mentioned the possibility of exploring the numbers on, on a certain way of doing it. Um, you know, if anybody has an idea that they really think is a good idea and is a good proposal and they want to actually put some time into energy into exploring that proposal, we would more than welcome that input. Um, it's just, you know, again, this has been a, some things have gotten lost in the, you know, it's been a complicated period. So our ability to analyze this particular problem as in-depth as we maybe would have liked to has been a little bit limited by our transition in the office here. But also, it hasn't been 100% clear to us what the reality of the options has been. And now that it's been sort of placed upon us, maybe that's going to clarify. So, but if people have good ideas and they want to bring them forward, we're happy to hear about them. What we can't really do is have ideas that are great ideas that are going to take 150 hours of the town manager's time put in our lap and say, you know, hey, can you guys figure this out and get back to us? We can't possibly do that for all these possible different solutions. So, Ramona's but, turn. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of the goat of the group here. I live, I live in Dumbleston. I have property in Putney. I have property in Dumbleston. Mostly Dumbleston. But would... My having property in Putney, would that give me freedom to go use these dumpsters? In Putney? They don't exist. <laughs> 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 that's, 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 right. yeah, until the dumpsters are there, absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> or, and, or, if they're, if they're sitting there unwatched, no one's going to tell, I'm sure. But. No, but uh, my, my answer to that realistically would be if you're a Putney taxpayer, it would entitle you to use well, those dumpsters. Right, right, exactly, no. yes. Yeah. No, I, I, I would say yes. Um, I, you know, I don't think that we're, we're not at that point yet because we haven't even we got the dumpsters. But I, would, I, would I, I would have to say that it would be open to any funding taxpayer, but I but we haven't had that discussion. Right. So I don't. Uh, but beyond that, Ramona, you were chosen as Citizen of the Year yeah, well, for the town, well, so we must have thought you were from Putney. Well, <laughs> so that's not your three bags of garbage that are still sitting there in the parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> You're still there. They're still there. Yeah. 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 We probably can get to those, right? At some point. Well, I mean, this is, unfortunately, this is going to be an ongoing discussion. And, and I'm sorry I can't give you a date because it just is not there. And it's a, ultimately, I think this is going to be probably a hot topic at town meeting. I, th that's you know, what I was just going to say. Where we can get a broader spectrum of opinion and that's in March. I know, I understand. <laughs> I, I knew all that. That's a big thing. Uh, of answer. course, right? I, I would say you'd want to let people know that it's, the time is not the end of August. I think a lot of people are assuming that by the end of August... Their closets are full of stinking. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I watch the <laughs> town select board <laughs> pretty faithfully, not maybe the whole meeting, but I've seen you go to the sites and look at them, and I heard you talking about the 31st, and I was really gung-ho on it, thinking this was going to happen. Yeah. So I was really disappointed when I found out that nothing really was going to happen at all, which is the reason I got 
30 sign 39 signatures from people yeah. around Putney. And I could have gotten hundreds, yeah. but you told me I was going to get recycling, so I said, I'll stop now. And you did. Yeah, so, I did. I'm sure you didn't. And well, we got recycling down in Bradford. We got it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's so, it's a little more complicated than we thought it was going to be. Why isn't there an effort afoot to use the Wyndham Solid Waste Facility, a different organization or re? I mean, I my understanding is they went bankrupt, right? Well, no. no, they're still, they're still, they're still there, and they're still operating. No, they took steps to, I suppose, not go into bankruptcy. I right. see. Yeah. Right. Well, the, thank the, you for clarifying that one. The basic problem. It was your that, office that, that told me they got bankrupt? But never mind. I mean, the, the town office. Okay. I don't remember what it was. Right. right. I'm but, not sure. Right. That, that's um, no, I, that, I mean the, the the reality that we're all facing is the fact that there was a time roughly f five to seven years ago when recycling recyclable materials had a significant value yeah. and it was actually a money-making business the reality is now it costs and until that market comes back around which could be two years could be 32 years we have no idea but until that market comes back around it's going to cost to get rid of recyclables so that's what drove Wyndham Solid Waste to make the choices they made because they could, the, it, essentially what it was is they would have gone bankrupt if they didn't take these steps in time. And so they took the steps in order to prevent themselves from going bankrupt. As driven so. by Act 148. Exactly. Right. So. All right. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. You know, as you say, if you've got a, you know, a good set, a good idea, get it to us. Please you bring know. it. Yeah. We'll look at it. Thanks. All right. All right. Thanks. Do you want to let Eva do her thing? Yes, Eva, certainly. Okay. Fire up. Yeah, I, I'm here because I feel that uh, my respect for the work of Cynthia Stoddard, I want to reiterate and ask you all to help me over the 11 years she was here to say some of the wonderful things she did for this community because I only came here in 69, but I found her to be the most uh, uh, accessible and the most efficient town manager we ever had. And I know that she managed to get the financial situation in order here. And she worked well with Brian and she worked well with the, with the fire chief. We did a wonderful job. And so I understand why she uh, resigned and I hope that you could help me. What are some of the things that she did for this town? Well, I mean, the first thing she was brought on for, as you pointed out, is really the, the town financials were in a real state of disarray. Um, I mean, I, you know, bringing uh, us right and, and right, bringing our accounting procedures up to snuff that were, you know, by acceptable accounting standards. I mean, and, you know, it would, there's a lot more demands on that record keeping information, mm. keeping that flow, you know, looking looking right, having positive audits, audits that you know reflect. Right our status and a clear getting the information clearly to, into that audit so that our, our fiscal picture was very clear or yeah. more, much clearer. I and would I say that would be Cynthia's you know one of her primary absolutely but as you say you know her accessibility and frankly the ability to really get everyone pulling in the same direction mm -hmm. as you pointed out with Tom and Brian but also, you know, simpler things like the, you know, the pool runs on a much more efficient basis than it had for decades. You know, it's it's an up and functioning relationship. You know, with the library, the library has been a huge success story yeah. since its move. Um, I think you know, one constantly of the, battling with the sidewalk. Right? You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Two two sections of sidewalk. She fabulous. she went through completing yeah. those. Yeah. She went through very complicated negotiations and discussions with both Rescue Inc. and, and, when, and the um, Wyndham County Sheriff's Department um, 
with both of which resulted in us staying with those departments ultimately and having good and I think ultimately right. and again, stronger in relationships. In those negotiations, negotiating with the private schools in town to keep that mo money moving, which is essentially bought in the firehouse, um, and will continue to be coming in. Well, I, I was grateful to the select board, when the select board, and, and you all weren't on, all of you weren't on the select board once you came in, but, and you got her through this outfit that Chris, mm -hmm. cut, uh, Chip, I'm sorry, the Chip came from, and I know that she's gone back there to work, and they're fortunate to have her, yes. so fortunate. Yes, and we are, and we my are heart very is sad to because I felt like she turned this town around in terms of the financial situation, and her relationship, <coughs> her working relationship with the community. Yeah. So I was, I have been grateful. So yeah. I ask, it says right here, Cynthia's daughter's town manager, I'm gonna have lunch with her on of Monday. May I have that? Yes. Thank you, I'll see that she gets that. And Actually, maybe just the tag and not the stand. Okay. So we can fill okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> you put it in the recycling. She'll understand the fiscal uh, aspect. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, see, I, her ability, and you know, I was on the Board of Civil Authority and Justice of Peace for a number of years. All the, I think pretty much the length of time that she was town uh, manager. And she, any, any question that I had just in general, and I thought she, well, she did, she's done a fabulous job. Okay, so and I, yeah, no, absolutely, 100%. And I think that one of the things that she did better than any financial manager or any town manager that I'm aware of has married the finances to the management in a way that made sense, clarified things. For example, just last year, separating the highway department budget from the from the general fund budget. Um, you know more transparent, easier to work with, better accounting system, you know, the kind of thing that I, I know I never would have thought of doing because I just don't understand it at that, on that level. And she did that with a lot of things. I think the pool is a good example. I think fire department and highway budgets are much cleaner and, mm -hmm. and more understandable than they ever had been. She just, you know, that was, that was her strong point was her ability to work with people, but also to do the financial yeah. um, organization that made it possible to do that, so. Anybody in the, uh, in the community sitting here have any comment to say about her ability in the town, her work? All right. She was fabulous. Very good at what she did. Yeah, very, very good at what she did. And uh, uh, the financial piece, we were in trouble. Yeah. And we were in the paper all the time. We were in the paper all the time as a town because yeah. of the records. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't say that we're like Coventry. I know that the woman no. there no. embezzled, <laughs> embezzled uh, over a million dollars. Yeah. But the thing is, that's not what happened in Putnam. We don't have just, a million dollars. And I'm not led, <laughs> blame. It was just record keeping. Yeah. There was a problem with record keeping. All right. So yeah, so she impressed me the first day I walked in here because she just obviously knew everything that she needed to do, how to do it well. And she sets a, a very high bar. Yeah. Level of professional standard. Yeah. Yeah. So professional standard, that, Absolutely. that was what yeah. everybody that I knew. Now, I don't know anything about the in-house politics and I don't want to know, but I do know this. She did her job and she did it well. Excellent. Excellent, excellent at her job. And excellent across the board. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I you know, the feed, all the feedback I get from voters is that they were always happy with the service she provided. They were, you know, people felt she was incredibly effective at her, yeah. at her role. So I'm going to miss her, and I'm cheering her on for her uh, work. And uh, Her second life at Nimrick. Nimrick. She is very Nimrick. much welcome back, and so every other community who now gets to work with her as a consultant Benefits from that. will benefit mm -hmm. as well from her experience here. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. All right. Thank you. Thanks. You, yeah, I have something. I have one more question, which is out left field. <laughs> um, I came tonight because on your paper it says something about the tires. I know you're not going into that tonight. I don't want you to. <laughs> the tires down on Old Five. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you're all talking that, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm gone. I know those mosquitoes. A lot of mosquitoes over there near you where you live. Uh, but, uh, we thank you all. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I was just wondering if perhaps you'd be
Hackman may be that problem. Your next meeting? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a, that's a Probably question. Probably not, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. Uh, you know, we did some Next some time inquiries, time. looked into, you know, the cost. It's a, it would be prohibitively costly cleanup of as that. I told, as I told and, the manager. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I think we kind of, you know, whether we the possibility of some kind of grant to do so or something like that might be helpful, but that's, it becomes a management issue of trying to chase that down and, and there really aren't, you know, there didn't seem to be any specific grants out there to address something like this. Uh, I don't mean to bring it up and no, prolong the meeting here, but I was just wondering. Yeah. I, I talked to the, I can still just get you there. <laughs> Yes. I talked to him about it and I explained the situation, but uh, I will, will not go into it tonight. No. <laughs> but uh, no, it's another sort of intractable, expensive thing to deal with. I, I know and it's against, it's, I know it's against the rules. Uh, it seems to me it'd be just simple to bury the whole mirror and say that. <laughs> you, well, you know, I mean, we, we, talked, we talked about, about that, but exactly, you can't. that's exactly <laughs> what we said. Well, you know, it'd be nice if we could just kind of, you know, or reach down and just pull it all out of there. Uh, you pull but it out, when, you, you know, pull it out, you're getting in the deep water. Yeah. <laughs> right, and you know, any down. kind of <laughs> dump site, brownfield issues like that become. That, that's another know, issue, and I'm sorry to bring it up, life. bring it up, but that's I, okay. was, I was wondering because. Some of his tires did go down into my pasture, yeah, or down yeah. to the fence line. I'm not concerned about them one way or the other. But I don't want to have to pay somebody to dig it out. <laughs> That's Is the point. pile getting bigger? No, no. Good. But, no, but uh, it's, it's, my next door neighbor. Well, this time of year, it's, it, it disappears, <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Except for that cloud of mosquitoes, right. And my next door neighbor, they're closer to her than they are to me. And she is in no situation financially to be able to pay to have it taken no, out. No, this is not. So it's, it's just, well, that's another kettle of fish to be boiled no. later. <laughs> and I thank you for bearing with me. I know thank I'm you. a pain in the... Taxes are due on the 18th, <laughs> by the way. I just want you to know. Take <laughs> care. Thank Thanks. you. Okay. Um. Jesse, I see you're back to see us again. I have got to be perfectly honest with you. I don't know if you guys have any input on this. I have. I've got some more information. Not put and a, a great come, deal of it. I can attention come on this month and then have a chance to look at things fine. If I don't figure out a way to go to the classes I want to go to, I'll still figure something out. And I'm going to apologize. I have not yet called for your catalog, but I've given you the toll free number. And I knew Cynthia was leaving, so, and I miss her, and I only knew her, what, maybe a month? Mm -hmm. She's pretty wonderful, guys, I'm yeah. sorry. Had a very, very confident presence, and I don't know, I'm starting to lose faith sometimes in the human race. That's all I'm gonna say. The ones that are really good and can always treat people fairly, they're kind of getting few and far between. But anyway, um, I can leave you a couple other things, I can come back, in case you all finally get a chance to look at my resume. And I'm waiting on a set of transcripts, so I'm equally a little bit behind. Okay, well, so. why don't we, why don't we yeah. leave hey, it up to Chip to be in touch with you when yep. it makes sense for you to come back? Well, yeah. or I'll come down to next month's, if they're always around the first Wednesday, I'll come down and I'll, I'm yeah, patient every for other a while. Until I'm patient for a while, and I know you guys had concerns. I own my home, otherwise I'd consider moving a little closer. Okay. And it's not a bad, well, i got to admit, it's not a bad time up and over the hill from Putney, except I get to learn the right way. I this time of year. I think it's a really nice scenic trip through the farm yeah. island, yeah. which, you know, it's a good thing. Everybody needs to ride somewhere once in a while. Yes. So. It's a nice air farm. Um, yeah. well, she's got a phone number for messages for me, but I'll be in touch with you guys. We'll try to see if the new town manager will let me know what's going on before next month's meeting. Yep, that sounds good. fair enough. I think I've, yeah. I've seen a uh, blue ink written, same thing. Yes, there's, there's, probably there should, there's, there's a packet. Yep. Um, okay. um, I'm sorry, there's okay. a bit, but the printed up resume, what you need to see is on regular professional, okay? 
Okay. Um, a friend, in fact, he's one of my references, gave my partner a computer I'm supposed to be able to use. I live with a gamer. End of the discussion. <laughs> I, you know, I'm lucky if I it's just say, yes. you know, I'm lucky if you occasionally lets me look for something Google I need. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you, guys. Have Thank a good rest of the week summer. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Got a town manager's report. Hey, we got something about the, something about the phase sidewalk, sidewalk phase two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, phase two sidewalk. I did walk through and took some notes about some things to be fixed up. They were going to be fixed up a week ago Wednesday. They got fixed up yesterday. I believe the contractor should have finished. The state's coming down to validate those items. I believe we have right now about $144,000 that we have paid out and not yet sought reimbursement for. The work was done in July. Um, so it's not a last year item, it's a this year item. Uh, and that fund right now shows that we're still carrying a surplus in it to phase one and uh, two and three. But Phase three is not going to have all the money that we thought phase three was going to have because there, was, told be because there was overage in phase two and yeah. different kinds of costs. Uh, but none of the raw details in terms of whole numbers with dollars and cents has been calculated out yet. I just ran the financials this afternoon about three o'clock and said, hmm, positive number, good. So not much else happening with that. And unfortunately, Greg just left. That was Greg Wilson who owns Basketville sitting in the back. I, I don't know. Okay, didn't know. Greg, no, okay. No. <laughs> no, I just I don't know what I, I don't know how Greg's feeling about things. So I'd be interested, but but um, it looks. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. I think it looks great. For um, what I have to work with. Right. Yeah. Right. No. And I well, think Greg's and Greg's going to have his challenge. I mean, there's a little bit of but you know that. I think somebody referred to it as the last meeting as the sidewalk to nowhere, but it is not a sidewalk to nowhere. It gets you up the hill and it's, you know, can cross over to it's the sidewalk part way to somewhere. It's, it's the part, <laughs> yeah, exactly, I would simply say. So the new video. So getting through phase three will be, you know, another set of steps and stay tuned. It's coming. But yeah. it will take probably a considerable amount of time and effort to get there. Yeah. I actually, not knowing what you get, right? I don't know Having just put you in the seat here today, so. <laughs> and so the real question is: This is all of seventeen, every fund balance sheet and budget status. Um, the only thing I will we get a shorter version of that, right? I, I <laughs> imagine you probably did, and not knowing what you did get. Um, what I, if you are versed in reading financials. If you are, you might like to see everything you have going on for June 30. If, Scott, you really want So to. this is end of year report is what this is, essentially. Not complete, not audited. Right, but. Right. But in well, terms of fund balance between general fund and highway fund. Yeah, you're right. yeah. Between general fund and highway fund, uh, right now it would appear that your fund balance is running at about $50,000, uh, which is nowhere near where, in my opinion, it should be. And so, you know, mentioning that you want to spend 40000 on potential um, solid waste issues, recycling issues. Which, which of course, is 17 18 Yeah, versus 17 18. Yeah. That's the end yeah. fund balance is about 50 right, right. Now. Yeah. And as you said, that's not audited, but it's a pretty good guess. Uh, yeah, the number, there's a number in there right now that says your general fund, fund balance has uh, fund 100 has about eighty thousand dollars in it. We have about that much in delinquent taxes, more than we had last year. So that's going to be yeah. deferred. That's yeah. going to be a problem. The highway fund is sitting around fifty-one thousand, and highway funds are meant for highway use. So that's what rolls forward for highway. Yeah. That was my uh, twenty-minute assertion between individuals coming to see me. Yep. There you go. All right. But every fund is in there right now, the last fund being the pension. Okay. Uh, do we have any warrants? Do you know? Anita just came in, so I could. Well, we could check with Anita and see if she knows if Laura put them in some particular okay. place, because yep. <laughs> that secret hadn't been shared with me. Um, I knew that they had been produced. I'm curious, did, did Laura mention that I was coming today? 
Laura's on vacation already. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I left a message on her yeah. phone asking to be put on the agenda for today, uh, and I hadn't heard back. So right. that's and she was gone all week, yes. I see. Left Friday and, and hasn't been back. Do you have a, you and you have a, something specific to? Yes, um, okay. but, but I don't want to um, jump ahead of this gentleman. Uh, no, sure. the, the Larry's here for uh, executive session. I'm, I'm telling Alice. Oh, right. I'm oh. Yeah. You're now, if you're not on the agenda, though, you could probably take him up under other business to the extent that he wishes to be heard. And yeah. Couldn't take, could take any binding action, but in yes. your discretion, there might be a way to handle it. Yep. Yes, yep. I, I, I thought you knew I was going to be there. Oh, I'm sorry. Huh? Um, can I go ahead? Sure. Um, I, I, I may have mentioned this, but uh, we're living on Phineas White. We're renting right now, and we're, um, uh, we've, we've made an offer on uh, 31 Frost Road, uh, the, the, snow, the snow house, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been accepted. Um, we're scheduled for a closing in a couple of weeks. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with the property, uh, but um, it, uh, it's in the village. It's, it's zoned in the village. Uh, zone and it's also within the uh, sewer uh, service area, uh, but it's also um, about 750 to 800 feet away from where the current main line is. Uh, there are two other houses on Frost Road, both owned by um, uh, Greg Greg Short or, Dick, yeah. or or his father. I'm not yeah. sure. Um, and uh, my understanding is the property uh, does not have uh, a leach field uh, of any kind, but it's been uh, basically dumping raw sewage into a pile of rocks for I don't know how long. Um, and so we have a situation where we are going to need to uh, create uh, a means of dealing with our septage. And uh, we've read the town plan and uh, we we, we think we understand the intention behind the, uh, the sewer uh, service area and the, 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 you know, the, the wastewater treatment plant and the interest in, in keeping the village vibrant and all the rest of it. And it makes sense to us. We, we would like to connect to the system. Um, and I spoke to Cynthia Stoddard uh, before she left and she uh, told me the name of an engineer who's been doing a lot of the work along the line, uh, Michael Mar Marquis. 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 So I had a conversation with him, and he explained that, you know, there, uh, I guess the big consideration is uh, whether the line needs to be main line or if it can be service line. He said that financially the difference between the two is approximately $20 per linear foot for service line and 30 to $40 for main line. Um, so what uh, I'm ho we're hoping is that there's a way for us to hook up to the system um, as a service line, even though there are two houses below us. Uh, we had a conversation with Olive Frost, and um, I wasn't able to talk to her, her son-in-law or her grandson, who might have a different perspective, but it seemed though as though um, they, they weren't uh, inspired to, to hook up. Um, technically, their, their houses are 300 and 400 feet from the main line, uh, and our house, again, is between 750 and 800, something like that. Um, so what I'd like to ask you to consider would be whether we uh, might be allowed to uh, uh, run a service line from our house to the main line the existing main line, uh, and, and we're prepared to, to pay for that ourselves. But if we had to um, run, pay for a main line, um, it, as opposed to a service line, it would become significantly more expensive for us. And we also feel that there are parity issues with that as well, uh, because we would only be doing the main line for the benefit of other houses that clearly don't have an don't appear to have an interest in hooking up. So it would be for some future value um, that we would be sort of investing in a main line, not for our benefit of any kind. You're right, it would be kind of 
curious to see what Marquis' engineering plan on that would be. Well, I was just going to say there's a there's a neighbor just up the road on, and I, you, 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 Chip won't be familiar enough with this right yeah. at the moment to sort of answer questions for you right now. Um, you know, the guy Chris Hayes, who runs yeah. the plant, would be the first person to yeah. to talk to about the possible, you know, sort of what's possible. But I think it was Michael who's recently been working on um, Mark Zeiter and um, yes. right, and right. Okay. exactly Signal Pine. Um, Signal Pine, which is the next road over. Right. They've yes. been doing something not dissimilar. So um, coordination between yeah. the two makes make sense. Well, at, well, probably not. They're probably separate. But mm -hmm. Michael would Michael and or Chris, it would be fresh in their head because it's a similar situation where the main line goes up part way and then service lines go out from there. So um, I think that the, the, the first thing we would have to determine, and we would depend on our manager to do this for us, is to make sure the system has capacity, which I can almost guarantee you is the case, but, okay. but that has to be you know, explored first. Um, and then, and then that question of main line versus service line, and if there, I don't know specifically whether we have a policy on whether, for example, distance. we potentially, exactly, distance, whether we potentially would be supportive of a main line to X distance and then a secondary past that or how that would work out. But this is really stuff that Chip would have to work through with our with the septic folks, and then probably with Michael's input as well the to see and the ordinance exactly to see exactly. So it's something that um, okay. you should be in touch with Chip about and make sure he has all the information that and he's in contact with Cynthia if he needs to yeah. be as well. Um, but you know, basically, it would start yeah. with Chip there is a putting together form, right? sort of a plan. There's so. a, I think it's a Fletcher folder that's out. Plus, there's uh, this topic is in the inbox uh, as well, waiting for me to have some authority to actually act on it. I see. <laughs> so I'm familiar with it, and I know there's something about a, um, a, a, a DI needing to be placed right next to somebody's house involved in this conversation. A, uh, a DI? Is a manhole structure. Oh, a manhole. Yeah, I think, I think main lines uh, necessitate manholes. Oh, even, even a connection that distance of 700 feet as a line would probably have to have a structure in it. I see. It's too long for trying to clear. But that would also, again, that would be Marquee's that would be more that. Or, or 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 the engineer of your I mean, we you know we're not. We're, I think people we're have good luck with, with Michael with Marquis. Yeah. He's working on another project in town, but there are tons of engineers out there. Yeah. Tons, but there are a number of engineers who are familiar enough with the system to be able to help you with this question. If, I see. He, he did indicate that um, he's right now permitting for October, mm -hmm. and that if it were possible to get some support from the town, that he we could we could actually connect this year, this calendar year, which obviously would be very important to us because we're we're closing in a couple of weeks, and I, I've just been candid with you and told you that my knowledge is there is no leach field there, right. and it makes us uncomfortable. We're actually living below where that house is located, um, so which makes you even more uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we clearly we want to we want to do the right thing, but so yeah, I, I mean again, my my guess would be that from our there's no there's not going to be any reason we're going to going to not want you to do that. In fact, I'm sure we would want you to do that. It's a question of what the engineering involved is before we sort of really have sure. kind of much input in that. Okay. Um, so so I think it would be for you to for you and Chip to discuss that to the point where Michael or another engineer can give some sort of a cost yes. estimate so that we know what's involved for okay. you and or if there's implications for us then, okay. then right. that's probably the next Is step. there a day of the week that's best for you? Uh, the doors open whenever I'm here, the question and I will be here tomorrow and Friday nine to two. So Friday night, nine to two. Nine to two. I'm that's to. that's the schedule that I got this week. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> well, then I'll aim for for tomorrow or, or Friday. Um, 
And it will be, Laura will be back in the office Monday. So if it doesn't work out for tomorrow or Friday, Laura will be here regularly if Chip isn't here and we'll be able to inform you as to when we will be able to meet with Chip. I see. So. I see. Okay, terrific. Right. Well, thank you. Could you give me your name, sir? Lionel Chute, C H U T E. Thank you. And Thanks very uh, much. Sorry, we didn't know you were going to be on, or we would have done it. You're right. You know, we're happy, right. Oh, it's all good. Thank you. All good. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion that we go into executive yeah, session. Please. Yep, second. Um, and that we invite Chip, Chip. and Larry Slayson Slayson to join us for confidential attorney client communication made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body. We're premature our general public knowledge would place the board at a disadvantage. Thank you. So stated. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.